This module is part of the Canadian Injury Prevention Curriculum. Audio is required for an enhanced learning experience. Throughout the module, you can access the glossary by clicking the upper left-hand corner in the toolbar above the video and the resources below the video. Welcome to the Introduction to Evaluation for Injury Prevention Practitioners module. This module will provide you with a basic understanding of what evaluation means, the primary uses of evaluation, and the importance of establishing evaluation in programming. So far in the course, we have looked at defining the problem, identifying risk and protective factors, selecting an intervention, and implementing a program. Evaluation is the last stage of the public health approach to injury prevention. However, laying the groundwork for evaluation occurs throughout the entire process. The glossary found here contains terms and definitions that will be used throughout the module. If, at any time during the module, you would like to review a term's definition, this glossary can be accessed on the upper left tab in the toolbar. By the end of this module, you will have the tools needed to effectively evaluate programs, policies, and initiatives. You will be able to define evaluation, recognize its primary uses, recognize the importance of establishing evaluation, and understand the role of evaluation. What is evaluation? According to evaluation expert Michael Patton, evaluation is the systematic collection of information about activities, characteristics, and outcomes of programs, policies, or other initiatives to make judgments about the intervention, improve effectiveness, and or inform decisions about future planning. There are many misconceptions about evaluation. What do you think are the most common myths about evaluating an injury prevention program? Consider some of these conversations. I've been thinking a lot about how we're going to evaluate our safe play program, and I really think we need to hire an expert evaluator. Evaluation is above our heads. We don't know how to execute a complicated analysis. We wouldn't even know where to start. Evaluation doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't need to involve a complicated design or complicated analysis. The process and approach can be very different for every community and every program. There is no single way of doing evaluation. Consider the following conversation. I've finalized the budget for our grant application, but I'm thinking we should remove evaluation from the budget. It's going to be too expensive. Evaluation doesn't have to be a huge financial burden. It can be done inexpensively. There are many resources available in the community, including many listed below, that can support evaluation at little to no cost. Consider the following conversation. It looks like everything is on target for the rollout of our program this spring. Great! What evaluation strategies have you built in? Oh, we don't need to worry about evaluation until the program is finished. Evaluation is an ongoing process that begins as soon as the idea for an injury prevention program is conceived. It is important to fine-tune your initiative at every step of the way so that you can make any adjustments needed and avoid surprises later. Evaluation isn't about judging a program or intervention after it is complete. It should never be viewed as an add-on or optional component. Why is evaluation so important? Take a minute to describe why you think evaluation is important. Evaluation helps to accurately identify the challenges you are wishing to solve. It helps to establish reasonable, practical objectives for dealing with these challenges. Evaluation is important to identify implementation challenges that will inform timely adjustments. It helps to determine if you have accomplished your initiative's objectives. It provides feedback that will help market the initiative by providing information to funding sources, the media, and the public. Finally, it helps to suggest ways to increase the initiative's effectiveness in the future. There are three main types of evaluation. Formative evaluation, process evaluation, and outcome evaluation. The first type of evaluation is formative evaluation. 
Formative evaluation involves activities at the pre-project planning stage and during the initial implementation phase. This type of evaluation considers the need, fit, resources, evidence, readiness, and capacity of the program, policy, or other initiative. Formative evaluation may test material and messages before the initiative is implemented. Example methods of formative evaluation include needs assessment, logic models, and the Plan Do Study Act. Remember, these are only a few method examples and are by no means an exhaustive list. Methods will be discussed more in depth later in the module. Examples of formative evaluation questions may include How can we increase participation in the program? What materials could be helpful before, during, and after a program? What stakeholders should I get involved with this project? What resources are available to me? I mentioned earlier that an example method of formative evaluation was needs assessments. Needs assessments are used largely to identify the initiative and risk factors through gathering locally relevant data, understanding public interpretation of the initiative, and assessing public and political will. Needs assessment methods include conducting a SWOT analysis, which addresses the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the program, surveys, or discussions with community members. Here are a few resources if you are interested in learning more about needs assessments. Another example method of formative evaluation is logic models. Logic models are particularly useful in identifying the problem, necessary inputs, and resources needed to support the intervention. The model identifies the core activities that are part of the intervention and implementation and the resulting outputs, and short, intermediate, and long-term outcomes. Here are a few resources if you are interested in learning more about logic models. The last example method of formative evaluation that was identified was Plan, Do, Study, Act. This model provides a roadmap for others to be able to replicate the intervention and implementation supports. In the plan stage, objectives, questions and predictions, and plans are identified. In the do stage, the plan is carried out, problems and unexpected observations are documented, and data analysis begins. In the study phase, data analysis is complete and a summary of learnings is developed. In the act stage, changes are made for the next cycle if necessary. Here are a few resources if you are interested in learning more about the Plan, Do, Study, Act model. The second type of evaluation is process evaluation. Process evaluation focuses on how well a program's plans, procedures, activities, and materials are working. This type of evaluation allows for early identification of problems and tests whether the initiative is implemented as it was intended. Example methods of process evaluation include focus groups, observations, and surveys. Remember, these are only a few method examples and are by no means an exhaustive list. Examples of process evaluation questions might include What is the number of students attending the program? Is the time of day that the program is being offered working? In what ways do the program activities align with the school curriculum? Do students who participate in the program demonstrate improvements in knowledge? The last type of evaluation is outcome evaluation. Outcome evaluation focuses on the success or impact of the initiative and typically answers the burning question of did I do what I set out to do and did I make a difference? Outcome evaluation tests whether the program met its ultimate goal and objectives. Example methods of outcome evaluation include focus groups, observations, and surveys. As I mentioned earlier, these are only a few of the many example methods. Examples of outcome evaluation questions might include Do the benefits of the program justify continued allocation of resources? Did the program have any unintended effects on the target population? Did the implementation of the program result in behavior change among the members of the target population? Are participants satisfied with what they gain from the program? 
Now that we have gone through the different types of evaluation, it is time to check your understanding. Read the following statements and correctly identify the evaluation type from the drop-down menu. There are nine steps involved when thinking about evaluation. Let's go into more detail. Step 1. Clarify your initiative. At the onset, it is very important to clearly define your goals and objectives by considering the outcome you are wishing to achieve, the population you are wishing to target, when you are wishing to achieve the outcome, and the criteria that needs to be met for you to know the initiative has been successful. Consider the following example that covers all four elements of a successful objective. Enroll 100 students in the Safe Talk Suicide Alertness training by the end of the fiscal year. Now, think about an initiative that you have wanted to implement. Use the blank template below to help clearly define your initiative's goals and objectives. Once completed, you can print a copy for your reference by pressing the printer icon in the top right corner of this page. Step 2. Engage Stakeholders this step involves defining who your stakeholders are. They might include clients, staff, board members, community partners, or maybe even funders. It is important to understand stakeholder interest and expectations and involve stakeholders in decision making. This will increase the likelihood of success. Step 3. Assess resources. Do you have the funding available to implement your initiative? What does your budget look like? As a general rule, 10% of a total initiative budget should be allocated to evaluation. What is your personal capacity? Staff availability? Are you able to tap into the support of partner organizations? Does equipment need to be purchased? Do you have any volunteers available? Step 4. Design your evaluation. Reflecting back on the knowledge you have gained thus far in the module, select the type of evaluation to be conducted and the method to be used. Step 5. Determine method measurement. There are two types of measurement you can use, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative is the application of numerical data, typically obtained through counting systems, surveys, and experimental designs. Qualitative is the application of more in-depth, open-ended data, typically obtained through personal interviews, focus groups, and participant observations. As the great Albert Einstein once said, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. Step 6. Data Collection Now that you have determined the types of measurement methods you will use, it is time for data collection. In this step, how the data will be collected, what questions will be asked, and who will ask them will be addressed. Step 7. Data Analysis It is important in this step to identify who will analyze the data and how the analysis will be conducted. Remember, data analysis doesn't have to be a complicated process. Step 8. Interpretation and Dissemination in this step, several questions will be explored, including Who will report the findings and how? Will the finding be submitted to a peer-reviewed journal? A press release to the media? A newsletter to stakeholders? Who will receive the data and when? How will the results be circulated? Step 9. Take action. Think about how your results could be applied in other places. What do the results mean for your initiative? Is your initiative accomplishing your goals and objectives? Here you find several resources related to evaluation that will be helpful to you and your team moving forward. What would a module about evaluation be without an evaluation of its own? There are two parts to the module evaluation. The first is intended to assess if you have shifted your readiness to tackle program evaluation. Is comprised of two question groups. Each ask how you felt at the start of the module, prior to the beginning, and how you feel now that you have completed the module. The final question of the self-evaluation is an exercise aimed at behavior change. The second part of the module evaluation is a feedback form, 
which helps us to improve the quality of the training and for developing future support around the workshops. Please click on the link below to complete the survey. Congratulations! You have completed this module.